Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Sarah the Rebel. And I'm Old Katrina. And this is Woman, Woman Up Podcast. Podcast. If you're new here, this is the show where two crazy feminist cat lady geeks talk about geeky shit like superheroes and whatnot. And whatnot. Every other Wednesday we get together to talk about the latest in geeky news, a very geeky main topic, and some other geeky stuff along with recommendations and a surprise segment today. <laughs> uh, we also answer questions at the end, so if you do have questions, try to hold on to them, write them down somewhere, or post them in the chat, we'll ignore them as well and repost them later. One of our one of our friends, Kiri, says, put a pin in it. Put a pin in it. Put a pin she in does it. Say that. She says that a lot. So and then put a pin in it and put it away, and then we'll answer at the end. Uh, and for returning fans, welcome back. Hello, we missed you. Uh, if you're listening to this in the future, hello, future people. Hello. Uh, and you can listen to this in the future on allgames.com or on iTunes. Wonderful. Uh, we uh, did the E3 thing. Rather, Sarah went to E3 and I watched all the pressers and said very snarky things Shit, on Twitter. Adorable. It was very fun. So we're going to be talking a lot about that, and that'll be our main topic today. But before that, it is time for an all new segment that I'm going to do right now. That'll take up like a minute of our time. And it is called Cat Lover of the Week. This new segment is in honor of a uh, recently lost co host, Smokey, who is very important. And so from here on out, every time we uh, do this segment, it's going to be in Smokey's honor. So the cat person of the day is Representative John Lewis. From John. Georgia, who is currently holding it down, holding it down, holding it down in Congress yes. uh, with a Democratic sit-in. He also has two cats, and they are delightful. They're so cute. There, there are pictures like, of him yeah. with his cats. Just looking at them with all the love in his eyes, as you so, do with your cat. Go, go, you representing the good things in the South, and not all the other stuff that's so horrible. Yeah. Yes, uh, so wonderful. And this, like, I don't think I did mention, it's been a while, yeah, that's what we keep. So in case you're new and you don't know, uh, we used to have Smokey and Bailey, and now there's just Bailey. Mm -hmm. So if you were Team Smokey, you're going to have to move over to Team Bailey. Rest in peace, Mama loves you. I will pour a little liquor out for you, but I don't waste liquor, so I'm going to just drink a little liquor mm -hmm. for you, Bailey. Mm -hmm. If you poured out liquor, Bailey would drink it. And then we and had a drunk cat on the stream. Yeah, it's terrible. Which is worse right. than a normal drunk cat on the stream. Oh, thanks for hosting us, Tick. Yes, thank you so, so much. Uh, so that leads us into our normal next uh, 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 segment. It's called News Flash. It's going to be really great when we have news one day. <laughs> um, so these are three stories that are important from the world of geekery that we'd like to share with you. The first one is very sad, so we're going to get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never said his name out loud before, but Anton Yelchin very good, has passed away. Yes. Uh, if you don't remember who he was, he was the amazing Chekhov in the new Star Trek reboot. Among other things, uh, he's always had, he, he was a very young actor too, younger than both of us, 27 years old. We are 29. Oh. And uh, it was just really tragic. His, his car had actually been recalled and there was a problem with the brake and he got crushed by it. So it's really a big devastating thing for the Star Trek community. So uh, to, for us to all of you out there, we feel your pain and uh, we hope that his memory continues to be preserved by his wonderful work. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, 2016 is just <sighs> like, fuck, hide everything you love from 2016 <laughs> because everybody is dying and it's Horrible. terrifying. Just be careful. Like, I haven't left the house partially because of the heat, but also because might die. So right. I mean honestly like VidCon is this coming week. And I I didn't want to go and I'm afraid for all my friends there mm -hmm. because of all the crazy shit that's been going on. And that's real talk. That's not Sarah being funny. That's mm -hmm. like I mean that. Yeah. And people are oh stay safe, stay safe. How? Yeah. Like, like shit. How so it's been a really rough set of weeks for uh for us here. So um just hold tight to your loved ones and Think about what you can do to make the future safer for all of us. Yes, give it, give it a try. Give it a try. Really think about it. Like, really think about what you can do to help the world. Right. To make things nicer. And even if it's something as simple as, call, if you live in America, call your Congress people up. Send them letters. Send them emails. Like, hey, this is important to me. Mm -hmm. It might Nothing might even come of that. But you told someone. Mm -hmm. so no one can say they weren't told. You know, as, um, we, as we sit here, history is being made. So right. it's, it's our, our turn to do that, too. 
Uh, so on to happier geek news. Well, actually, you know what? This might not be happy. <laughs> Um, Let's just get to the third part. We should. We should. <laughs> uh, Stargate, you guys may have heard, was coming back. Mm -hmm. And we found out more in the fact that it will be a reboot. And the reason being that they felt they, they couldn't tell a Stargate story 20 years in the future. Uh, and so they felt they needed to go all the way back and start over. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I'm sorry, but Star Wars didn't need to start over. And that is my excuse for everything. They were just like, let's keep going. I'm sorry, those other stories didn't work. We're just going to move on and make better stories. So, I don't know. That kind of just sounds like people were lazy. Yes, it does. <laughs> people were lazy, and it's not like any of the... I mean, the cast is always very involved. Like, there's no Stargate cast member that I know of um, that, that wouldn't be down for this. So, right. you know. Um, yeah, I just... I'm not... I'm never a big fan of reboots, personally. I kind of feel like if we loved a movie, it well, there's no way to capture that again without mm -hmm. doing the exact same thing again. And even then, the world's changed. Other things have come out that affect how you feel about movies. Mm -hmm. And Stargate was one of my favorite movies growing up. So the idea of it not being cheesy as fuck, uh, and like, what are they going to do? Make it really realistic and gritty like, like they do with all the movies nowadays? I don't yeah. want that for Stargate. Look at how bad it's doing with Power Rangers, you guys. I'm sorry. I know Brian Cranston is part of the cast now, but, you know, it's not It's not turning out real Speaking well. Of which, Power Rangers may have just be like, all right, we made the kids diverse. Now, shh, you don't get any more diversity. Yeah, right. What, what, what kept Zordon from being a person of color? I don't know. And they already replaced Rita Repulsa, who was a great opportunity to give a Latina actress a chance and start up in a Power Rangers movie. I guess fuck it, right? It's just a Power Rangers movie. No. Uh, okay, so before we get angry, uh, let's talk about some good news instead. Yes. Um, so cool good news, great cool good news, especially for those of you who are as deep into Star Wars as I am. Um, we're there, yeah. <laughs> EW is doing another uh, stream of reveals regarding Star Wars as they do every year, it seems. Um, and today we got a lot more information on everyone's uh, name and who they are. And it's really cool. Again, you know, we get that that sense of diversity, even though there aren't that many women in the cast. Uh, uh, all these women taking over Star oh, Wars. Oh, there's like one big chick in every single right. It's like one. It's like one, maybe two at most. Like okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Usually an alien. My race loan fandom is major heavy, and I just wish she could just be in this movie. And I understand why she couldn't be in the movie because if she was in the movie, the rebels wouldn't get to steal the plans. But you know, barring that, because race long doesn't make fucking mistakes. <laughs> um, moving on, though, uh, Forrest Whitaker is a uh, talking point because his character is the first to bridge from the cartoons to the movies. Mm -hmm. um, back in the Onderon arc of uh, the Clone Wars, there was a brother-sister duo that led a huge resistance, and uh, Forrest Whitaker is playing... Um, uh, Oh, his last name is Guerrera. His first name is Saw. Boom, Saw Guerrera, who is the brother of Sila Guerrera, um, who was uh, horribly fridged in the Clone Wars, in my opinion. As usual. As usual. Uh, they, the, but it's really cool because they were uh, these people of color who played such a huge part. They fought alongside Anakin and Ahsoka. Um, and so now it's going to be interesting to see Forrest Whitaker on the other side of the war uh, from Vader, who is technically someone he's fought alongside. Right. So nobody really knows that, but, you know, um, so yeah, it's going really cool. Do I'm you, excited. Do you think we're going to see Lost Stars cameos? Um, because it's one of the plot po points in the book does take place at this time. It does indeed. And he, he, Saw Guerrera has actually been mentioned quite a lot throughout the books. Uh, and I can't believe it didn't get spelled out in front of me before this. I'm, this is ridiculous. Um, I don't know if we'll see Lost Stars cameos. There, There is a lot to hack into this movie. Right. I would love to see, like, Sienna and Thane, or Sienna and Thane just running across the screen right. at the Academy or something. Like, ooh, we're very important kids. Don't mind <laughs> us. And you're like, oh, my God, look at the redhead and the black woman. It's them. <laughs> They're just running alongside you. I hope they put, like, some 15 pairs of redheads and black women together to fuck with us in this movie <laughs> as, like, background extras. So all of us oh, looking for them could just see them over and over yes. again. Like, like, oh, I, wait, maybe that, that, 
Yeah, there there are a lot of caveats. Like I said, I really want Ray Sloan to. I mean, I feel like this would be the opportune picture. I wrote about her for Blaster Fangirls, and she she got all the way up to Grand Admiral status. She outlived the Emperor and Darth Vader. She's a woman of color who is amazing and knows what she's doing and can go toe to toe with Jedi. So I would just really like to see her on screen. Right. And it would be great even if it was just a mention of like at the end after the rebels steal the plans, Vader goes, forget this, get Vice Admiral Sloan. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So it's probably not gonna happen and uh, I can't complain too much, but that was all this, this we can is complain really cool. as much as we want. This is our can. I just don't want to expand <laughs> the time. Um okay, but it's a really cool it's cool to see these characters bridging up into the movies and becoming, you know, the the topmost level of canon that you can be, really. The um, highest level of the, canon. Ha -ha. Ha -ha. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that was our news for the week. Yeah. Let us know if there's anything we missed to the questions. And now it's time for Chick Picks. Chick Picks are things that we think you should go check out. Uh, they usually are created or involving a woman. Uh, but not always. Um, and yeah, I believe Sarah can start it off. Yeah. So if you are not following me on Twitter, did not see me getting super, super, duper hyped about this. Uh -huh. uh, I was on a podcast about Dragon Ball Z. Uh, the podcast is run by Iffy, who you guys might know from Geek and Sundry, and uh, Danny, who is this like awesome comedian chick, who I met at another random event that did not involve Geek and Sundry. So that was like a weird coincidence. <laughs> and talking to them is when I put two and two together and realized that Krillin It, something that Ify kept saying online, was actually a podcast of his mm -hmm. about Dragon Ball Z, and I said, you bitches better put me on the show. <laughs> and you know, nobody can stand against Sarah for very long. So they put me on the show, and we had a ball, and you should listen to it, because Ify and I are actually pretty funny together. Yay! So shout out to Ify, thanks for that, <laughs> and go listen to it. Wow. Not right now. Yeah, wait until this is done, guys. Um, so... I my my first fan pick chick pick thing is Blaster Fangirls. Uh, it's a new from Vertical of Blaster. It started earlier this year, and I'm really trying to help it ramp up because I would love it if uh, you know if this really took off and became a venue to you know have a better job. In. So hey yo, support Blaster Fangirls. Go check out all of the information and articles there, written by some of your favorite online human females. Um and yeah and 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 share the share the love. Share I'm bad at talking. I'm bad at talking on our <laughs> podcast. <she said. laughs> what uh, is this bad at talking? So uh, Kick Ass is another iteration coming out called Kick Ass the New Girl, mm -hmm. and the new girl is a black woman, which as we know means a lot of people are going to be upset and say a bunch of bullshit. So what I would like for you to do is to go to your local comic store. It's very early yet, and say hey. Uh, when can I pre-order the new Kick-Ass? Just ask them. They'll tell you if you can do it now or later. Let's show the world that we're actually really excited that they try to incorporate more diversity. Let's like prove to comics that we can put our money where our uh, grabby hands are. Mm -hmm. And let's support creative and diverse decisions. Yay! My second chick pick is... Chick pick is um, CatCon LA, which is happening this weekend. If you guys want to go check it out, uh, the tickets are, I think, 25 bucks a day, which is not so bad. Uh, and then it's at uh, the Downtown Convention Center. I would like to go, so tell them to invite me for free last minute, please, because I just promoted their their convention. Yes, everyone tweet CatCon LA and <laughs> tweet say them. you should totally invite these two podcasters because they are crazy cat ladies. And they just talked about your con. Tell yes. them right now at CatCon LA. Yes. Invite because uh, that's why I'm not going either. Because I'm like, oh, should you pay for this, Sarah? <laughs> uh, I know that I'm gonna spend money on stuff my cat doesn't need already. So, <laughs> yes. uh, Derek, that was too real, and the fillets are hurt. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to decide for my third chick pick. Um, you know, I'm gonna go for it. So, this actually, uh, you know what, I'm gonna save this for the end instead. Mm -hmm. Me and the bees. That is my last chick pick for you. Go buy some motherfucking lemonade from an entrepreneuring young girl who is doing her damn thing. I love to see young people succeeding, finding something to be passionate about, and creating it for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that's something near and dear to my heart. For those of you who know my background, um, I started working with the city when I was 15 and got to do a lot of things that kids don't normally get to do. 
So, uh, I love to support young people doing awesome shit, not being little pieces of fuck. Because mm -hmm. that's what little kids normally are. Yep. So, Stupid children. go check out Buy Some Lemonade. Yay! Support good children. Um, support the good ones. <laughs> yes. My final chick pick is uh, L Hopper Design. Uh, you can check her out on Twitter at L Hopper Design. Uh, she is clearing out her stock of some of her fantastic and super popular Star Wars dresses, including the uh, Ray dress, uh, the Rebel Fighter dress. So if you wanted any of these dresses, it's time to order now as opposed to later, because I don't know if she's going to continue making these because she has another collection coming out soon. So uh, support your independent dressmakers. Is this her? Is that one? Yep, that's her. Found her. She also got a new Hamilton collection out. Wow. Hamilton gown. Oh, oh no. Yep. Uh, we were so lucky. The karaoke place we went last night did not have any Hamilton songs. So <laughs> the Hamilton fan with us couldn't, like, destroy us. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, they still did fly to the Concords a lot. But anyway. Oh, okay, <clears throat> well. Now that Chick Picks and our news flash is over, it's time for Heads, Heads Up, up Woman Up. up. Uh, this is where we actually talk about our main topic. And if you're dumb and haven't noticed, I shouldn't say dumb. If you're a pickle and haven't noticed, pickles. our topic is E3. Uh, our thoughts on the trends of E3 and what games we're excited about that we learned about or, or talked about at E3. Um, so first we're going to talk about the press conferences. Did you watch all of them? Some yes, of them? I watched all of them. Uh, I did enjoy your snarky banter. So to you, do you feel like someone won or did the best job? Okay, so everybody's a winner in their hearts, but Sony won <laughs> in... And they, Sony won because they cut to the chase. Like, there was no, no, no peppering, like, fluff or whatever. They just showed us the game, they got in and out, and that was fine. Like, I... You know, I love Aisha Tyler. There are a lot of people who work for Ubisoft that I love very much, but that was not a presentation I wanted to watch. Yes. So, so please don't just give us the games. Just okay. give us the games. That's it. I also agree. Sony felt like the winner. Um, yeah. And Ubisoft, man, I, I hope Ubisoft never changes, though. <laughs> because <laughs> somebody has to bring the crazy, wacky bullshit so I can win a drinking game about the press conferences, like, <laughs> what the fuck was going on at all times was like, on my lips. <laughs> I feel like I, I, I give Ubisoft more of a pass because they're known for it than I did for, like, Xbox, right. which was kind of just a really boring mess. Like, at least boring. Ubisoft was a mess, but it was like, I, I love this mess. I'm here for this mess. Yes. Uh, speaking of being here for their mess, I really, <laughs> really enjoyed when LeVar Burton came on stage. And Aisha Tyler was like, I can't believe, she basically was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, this is a moment or this is very important. Like, I don't remember exactly mm -hmm. what she said under her breath. But you could tell that for her, having two black people on stage, having one of her black heroes on stage, that meant so much to her. Mm -hmm. And that was just so fucking beautiful to see. And I, uh, it may have happened before. I don't know, I, but not in my memory. Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing it. Um, Although I will also mention, this leads right into one of the trends of E3, which was um, VR. Mm -hmm. So LeVar was up there because he had been, and other members of the past Star Trek uh, cast, had been checking out a new game, I believe it's called Star Trek Bridge? Bridge something, something like something. that. Yeah. Uh, and it's a game just like you may have played at an amusement park where everyone um, takes positions on the bridge and they have a role, like maybe engineer or captain or something. Mm. And you have to try and survive a mission or achieve a goal. Um, what was interesting to me that I noticed right away is, yes, it's a cool thing to have um, actors from the show talk about it. Mm -hmm. But you're only going to get that kind of hype from people who aren't gamers mm -hmm. about this sort of game, right? Because it didn't look beautiful. The graphics weren't dope. It wasn't doing anything brand new that we'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. But if you're an actor, you haven't seen that shit before. This is amazing. We have the fucking technology to, to put a thing on my face and I'm on the bridge. And, oh, like, it was a great move on their part mm -hmm. to use him. Yeah. Because it's like your dad when you show him some cool shit. But I, as soon as that was on the screen, I was recording it to show my dad because I knew my dad would appreciate it. And I'll give them this. I'll give them this. Watching that, watching that presentation after the horribly written scripted mess that was that Tom Clancy run through. That was who 
wrote that? Why don't you freaking game studios hire real writers? Yeah, we're right here. To write your script. I'll make it so right good here. Mm. We'll make them entertaining. Your stupid boring game. I can make people love it. Okay. Anyway. It was I, painful <laughs> hearing them read off the teleprompter. <laughs> terrible things. Oh my god. So watching the actors do it was really bad. Like that's that presentation made me smile even though it wasn't for me. Right. Like I appreciated it. So that was not necessarily the best of VR that was shown at the conference, but there was a lot of really cool stuff right. uh, if you are into VR. So uh, on the show floor, the, everywhere you looked was a VR experience. Mm -hmm. um, through all all the different VR methods possible, they even had porn on the show. You could like watch <laughs> a like porn interaction thing. Mm -hmm. They had one where you like lay down. It's a guided meditation. Like VR was like obviously the big deal of this year's E3. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get into that in a second, but first I thought I should just tell you guys about my experience at E3, <clears throat> and then we'll dive into something we can both talk about, which is <clears throat> trends and whatnot. So, OMG, this was an exciting E3 for me. So for once, I was not working at all, not even writing articles or anything, so um, I was basically just checking out um, the mood of the place for Flavor Text later on, which I can't tell you about. But anyway, I wasn't really work. It didn't feel like work. So uh, the lines were just as long as ever, but somehow the show floor felt more empty than before, which is a really weird juxtaposition. Um, I immediately saw Method Man playing Sea of Thieves, <laughs> which is not what I would have... I mean, I guess that's like really presumptive of me to assume I know what kind of games Method Man likes to play, but mm -hmm. Sea of Thieves was not top of mind for me. <laughs> for that, he's really tall. Mm -hmm. So I stood behind some other taller than me person because I'm very short trying to speak to him and tell him that he wrote the greatest hip hop love song of all time and that meant a lot to me, but these bitches kept talking to him. And so finally I walked away having not spoken to Method Man and I felt shitty about it for the rest of E3. So when I saw Lupe Fiasco, I said, hi, I'd like to take a selfie with you. Mm -hmm. And as embarrassed as I felt about doing that, I'm happy I did it because I didn't have the second regret, like, oh, and I didn't say hi to Lupe Fiasco. Mm -hmm. um, I hung out in the Twitch booth a bit and actually got to speak to NPR about Woman Up Podcast. And NPR. NPR, you guys. Um, Holy crap. They freaking, oh my god. Okay, so they did a live stream mm -hmm. on their Facebook page where uh, they asked me about Woman Up and about um, Twitch in general. And shout out to Chase for hooking yeah. that up because that was amazing. We love you, Chase. Chase <clears throat> has always been very kind to our show. Yes, so hopefully some people discover us through NPR. Then, right after that ends, a uh, Lil Wayne concert takes place right behind me. Mm -hmm. So I turn around, there's that little gremlin. Just doing his thing. Kudos to him, by the way, because he suffered two seizures the day before because he's irresponsible. Because <laughs> he won't stop sipping on syrup. How about you stop? Just no, just no, no. Just keep just going. Don't kill yourself. No, no, no child. No. I, let it happen. Let it. Let him go. He says <laughs> terrible things about women. Oh he yeah, that's leave. true. That's true. Anywho, See, I'm too caring. you are too caring and kind. Um. I also ran into Xavier Woods, that's how he ended up playing Guacamelee with me, mm -hmm. uh, at a party and immediately became best friends somehow, as you can Aww. see from the picture. We're clearly best, 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 best friends. <laughs> or maybe he just takes better pictures, I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, so it was really cool to see all those celebrities who weren't there. I mean, Lil Wayne was probably there to promote something, but everyone else was there because they play games and they were able to get a pass, mm -hmm. uh, which is it's kind of amazing to see how far gaming has come that we have people come to our shows not because they they want to show off or be seen but because they want to get to play the games first and mm -hmm. check shit out like that's really cool um so that was my e3 went to a lot of parties got really drunk met a lot of friends saw a lot of old friends had a blast and Cap One kicked people's ass in street fighter Woo! shout out to Cap One. i saw you i took some pictures behind your back you cute anyway Okay. <laughs> so, on to trends. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, we were talking about E3 a little bit. What do you think about E3 as it, I mean, sorry, what do you think about VR as it pertains to gaming? Um, I'm, I'm really, okay, so I cover a lot of VR stuff over on Inverse. I talk a lot about tech and, and, uh, and science there. And so I've been following the VR trail and I'm not surprised at all by the, it being so popular at E3. Um, but I'm excited for, yeah, <laughs> Columbia's down, I'm sorry, 
Um, my cat ran away too. He was barely was like, what the <laughs> shit? <laughs> um, sorry. Thank you for that update, Kaiser. Fantastic. Um, I we're forgot. Saying, I'm sorry. I'm so lost. Stop interrupting so her. It was just so okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Please VR, stop interrupting cover, me. You cover VR. Okay. I, I cover VR and uh, da, 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 I'm going down the list in my head. Who cares? I'm really excited for the development of what's past virtual reality. Like I need to bring up Star Wars, but there are a lot of experiences like you this where. No, I don't hate to make up Star Wars. There are a lot of experiences like this E3 that I saw from like the, the videos and photos where uh, if you know the presentations went a step beyond VR and you were in a box interacting with the space around you. Um, Star Wars has a demo like this where you interact with 3PO. Thank you, helicopter. Thank you, helicopter, everyone, special guests. And so that's what that's what I'm excited for. For is uh, is uh, augmented reality uh, rather than VR. So I'm always excited for something ahead of what E3 is, I guess. So I actually I had the exact same conversation with somebody at lunch, and they were mm -hmm. saying, you know, they're way more into augmented reality than mm -hmm. VR. It's way cooler and it's more doable. So I personally I get motion sick. Uh, even playing, if you guys notice, I stopped playing Far Cry 4 as much as I loved Far Cry 3. Far mm -hmm. Cry 4 was making me motion sick uh, from the way the graphics moved and interacted. Um, and VR is even worse. I can't even do games that they're like, oh, we swear this won't make you motion sick. I get motion sick on. And I ran into a few friends, seasoned journalists who played lots of games who did not get motion sick, who told me they almost threw up. Doing various things on various games, uh, not the porn one. Everyone was very happy with the porn VR. Um, <laughs> so, creating something that we'd all have to buy extra as this expensive add-on, mm -hmm. and it's something that only certain members of the gaming community will be able to access, and it's something that you have to wear on your face, and has mm -hmm. to touch you, it has to touch other people. They would invent little like VR condoms <laughs> uh, to like protect your face from other people's sweat. Like, I just don't think VR is ever going to be viable. Um, as like a household thing. Mm -hmm. I think it will always be a cool thing at uh, amusement parks mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. Because like I said, that's the first time I ever played something like the Star Trek Bridge game was I had to rescue Nessie's eggs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so amusement park, like, or, or like the, the roller coasters that are using VR to augment the roller coasters. Those are applications where I could see VR really working. Mm -hmm. But in people's homes, I just don't see it. Just like 3D. I don't. I don't even think economically we're we're there yet. Like I see VR as becoming something like a theme park experience, like it always has, or something at an event, or like you know, VR can be a cool, viable marketing tool. But right now, I don't think that at home we're ready for it. I don't think that the technology is at a point where it can be used by enough people who won't get sick uh, to do to do uh, their VR gaming with. So. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm excited, though. I'm excited for the technology. I'm excited that it's led into augmented reality. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited to see that develop further because I, I love the, any idea of being able to get the hell out of this world for a little while. Right. So that's why I've always been really interested in this kind of stuff. But I totally agree. I think right now it's not, it's not like bringing home a console. It is the price of a console, many of them. And some even more, like forget the Oculus Rift. Yeah. You, ever, you want the best VR technology? Well, you're never going to be able to afford it. So it's great, but you're not going to be able to afford it. Yes. Um, so B-Boy brings up an interesting point. Uh, one of the, uh, Ian Hank talked about one of the VR sets that seemed like one of the companies has almost achieved, uh, solved the space problem. Um, you know, there are things being resolved, like you said, in pursuit of this technology that will affect other areas of right. technology. So that that is interesting. Um, but the fact that everyone's so hype on it just reminds me of when the six axis controller came out. Yeah. Or when PlayStation tried to catch up with the PlayStation Move, mm -hmm. when everything became about uh, blowing into your DS and waving your arms around and incorporating that stuff into games, to me, I found it mostly hurt the games. I think Heavenly Sword, the first time most of us played it, we had to guide a fucking cannonball using the controller. We were like, this is the most annoying thing I've ever done. We end up loving it by the end of the game, but um, I, th I just think of all these games that came out as a result of move controls that I hated, and so I really hate to see the same thing happening with VR, where I'm not able to enjoy the game because I don't want to get VR. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, that is my one concern about it. Um, so, moving on to another trend, uh, 
bunch of people decided not to be at E3. Uh, they decided they could just have their stuff outside of E3 or show their games in private rooms, not on the show floor. Um, I personally think that E3 as a trade show is dying. Do you have yes. thoughts on this? I absolutely do. Um, this is something that I've talked about a lot with very many friends, um, some in the in industry and some within the convention space. Uh, E3, from a convention standpoint, from the standpoint of like someone who used to be a kid, a gamer, who aspired to be at the show. When you I used aspired, to be a kid? I used to be a child <laughs> and a gamer! What? <laughs> what? Um, uh, E3 was something that was like, you knew that you had to have a job in games to go to E3. Like, that was the bar, that was the limit. If you wanted to go, you better get, get to work, kid. And that's what I did. <laughs> like, I... I, I worked, I wrote, I served as a booth babe one year just so I could get in. And I feel like E3 is becoming more of a convention. Like, uh, like people show up to cosplay, in cosplay. I know, I saw, E3. I saw cosplayers. I was like, who weren't working booths. And I was no, like, they were just there. And it's kind of like, I don't even want to seem Chrissy, but like to me, E3 has, I go to that convention center several times a year for several different things. And most of them are trade shows. And not all of them are like industry shows strictly like E3 used to be, and now it kind of just feels like, like, I don't know, like the, that mad dash of Zelda, the first Zelda was, is like the perfect, like, show of what it is. Like, back in the day, you would not see developers, reporters, anything, anybody doing them. And so, right. I think it's become, because it's becoming more of a convention and less of a place to do your job, um, it's definitely dying in that sense. Like, I don't think it's a trade show anymore. It's like a step away from becoming another convention, like AX or right. or whatever else is at Kamikaze and stuff. Like, it's not, you don't go there to do your job anymore. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I agree with you because I, I think it's in an awkward position of, um, oh, consumers aren't allowed to come, but we now have a direct line to consumers. Mm -hmm. Every single company has social media where they can directly interact. They can stream with their consumers. Mm -hmm. They can get YouTubers to play uh, their game. Like There's so much more close interaction that I don't think you need the middleman mm -hmm. as much anymore. And that was kind of what the trade show did. It was yeah. like, you know, talking to places that were going to sell your game, talking to people who were going to hype your game, and talking to, uh, to companies to make deals mm -hmm. about your game. And, you know, that happens so quickly nowadays mm -hmm. and so much more in an interactive kind of sense that I, I don't think there's a need for a trade show uh, mm -hmm. like E3 anymore. So, and I agree with you, I saw a lot of convention kind of trends, like the fact that they opened it up to a certain number of consumers is kind of like ringing the bell, like, hey, we know what we have to do to survive. On top of that, let's talk about the way they opened it up to consumers. I have seen some of the most ridiculous contests to get into E3. There was one uh, where people had to go to Westfield. A lot of my friends did this. A bunch of kids went to Westfield for this Xbox event. They stayed out until two in the morning. There were thousands of them and like 200 of them got picked. And these these were like 18, 17 year olds trying to get into the show right. and being there at four in the morning without anybody watching them. So it's just like, it's kind of ridiculous. Like now, um, and I, I feel like it's being treated like Comic Con in a way where, where it's unobtainable, but true to everyone it's obtainable. So right. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I can agree with anymore. that, but oddly enough, because games companies don't feel that way, I think they're going, more and more of them will pull out because E3 is so expensive. Can you imagine? So first of all, the normal cost of a booth is very crazy. Mm -hmm. The cost of a booth that has internet, mm -hmm. is, it, it could be like $10,000 to get internet for a small booth. And you're talking internet strong enough that a bunch of game systems can all connect with each other and work and you don't have lag, which will make you think this game is shitty. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a, a lot of money to spend uh, to go to a convention. Yes. Uh, so I, I worry that even if it switches to a convention, will it if be as big as PAX even? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because PAX really earned what it has, which was we're fans and we love the game. As much as I have problems with the higher up at PAX, the actual convention of PAX is a wonderful place where people are interacting and sharing their love of something in a very authentic way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily sure that E3 will be able to do that. So I'm kind of interested to see what E3 can do to stay alive instead. And Derek, yeah, if that wasn't clear what I was trying to say, it's like, yes, it used to be retail, and retail isn't what yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Yeah.
So we'll see what happens. Uh, E3 is changing. The times they are changing. The times they're changing. They are. So let's talk uh, real quick about our favorite games before we have to go. Um, I do agree. Horizon is going to be really fun. Um, a lot of games this year that are coming out that are finally ready were also games we saw last year. So we saw a very quick teaser for this one. And I like to think of it as a... Uh, what would happen if that redhead decided to ditch Jon Snow because he's bad in bed <laughs> and went to this futuristic weird world? Look at that bad in bed. He ate a pussy. That's really like the top of the Yeah, but man. if you look at Game of Thrones, man, do you really think he's he's among the top tops? <laughs> I like Jon Snow a lot. I think he knows more than he lets on. Uh, so I was really excited for Horizon because uh, Dinosaur Robot. Boom. Uh, a lot of exploration. Mm -hmm. Female protagonist. Uh, it looks like it's going to be really fun. It immediately kind of reminded me of Far Cry as far as the wilderness and the animal interaction went, not the actual uh, action part of it. So that got me intrigued. Mm -hmm. uh, so anytime something is original, you already get so many points for me because people mm -hmm. are just like not with these original stories uh, in fantastical settings anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm excited to see something original and different. Uh, I am excited for, what's that one, the last, the last shit, the last guardian? The last guardian, yes. Um, I'm excited because we finally have a release date and it's finally, God finally dang. coming. Um, so I, I was pretty pumped about that. A uh, quick note that Star Trek VR presentation had me so hyped before I realized it was just an add-on to Battlefront. Like... <laughs> I'm just very upset. Like, Battlefront has all these cool concepts. Like, Bestman is gorgeous. The Fighter Squadron uh, uh, game mode is fantastic. Everybody plays it. Everyone loves it. Everything else about that game is just like, ah. Was, so It mm. felt kind of empty to me. It felt like I got shipped a not-finished game. And yeah. I feel that more and more with so many games. Like, uh, why would I put on a VR headset when I can just go to Dave & Buster's, pay $7, and play the same game? Like, I'm not going to pay $300. <laughs> as opposed to right, you know. So I'm not excited for the Last Guardian because I've spent years being hype about it, and you know, after that, um, uh, what's it called? Number nine, mighty <laughs> number nine game <laughs> coming out and disappointing all of us. Like I don't want to be disappointed again, and also I know that adorable thing is gonna die. There's no way that adorable thing gets out alive. So I'm not excited for your fucking game. I just would have been excited five years ago. You didn't want to give it to me then. So screw yourself. Uh, yeah. I'm excited for Titanfall 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved Titanfall. I didn't play it as much as I would have played it if it had single player campaign. Because I was just constantly dying. And after a little while, that just gets like, okay, I'm just so shit at this game. I don't deserve to play. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like a single player campaign would give me the time I needed to become more accustomed to the controls. And then go out and learn how to not suck as much and not be booey. So uh, I got to play it. One of my friends is uh, one of the developers on it, and he stood behind me while I played, so that was really embarrassing. I killed a lot of grunts. <laughs> they were not real people, they were bots. Uh, they've instituted a new little application with it where um, you have mini goals that are based on what you're doing at in that particular moment in the fight, mm -hmm. and that kind of gives it a little more excitement and, and a little more of an edge for you to try new things, so I, I'm pretty excited to see what else they got going on. Um, outside of that, I am excited for Sea of Thieves because it has uh, all of the elements of games that I enjoy, save for like shirtless men, I don't know. But, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I love adventure games, uh, and I've been trying to find one that doesn't make me angry, so hopefully this one won't. I don't know. <laughs> hopefully it won't make me angry. <laughs> what have we become? <laughs> That's what have we become? become? That's why I quit reviewing games. Oh. Like, it's it. That's that's why I quit. Can like, somebody write, I hope it won't make me angry. Can you tweet that to me? Because that's too <laughs> fucking real. Oh, man. So I'm excited for Tekken 7 because I'm a Tekken fangirl. Always have been, always will be. Um, it looks great. Uh, Kuma's going to be in it from Street Fighter. What the what? That is the best friendship to ever happen. Ono-san and Harada-san being like, they're my OTP of friendship. Aww. And the fact that they like get to do all these cool things together just makes me like, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> I also love that Harada showed up to that conference wearing whatever the fuck he felt like. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. bet he had some tequila under that robe. I guarantee you he had some tequila under that robe because that's how he rolls. Anyway. Oh, are you excited for um, for Norman Reedus and his fabulous face? No. 
<laughs> not at all. Uh, yeah, there, you're gonna hear some, some games that you're gonna be like, but this game that everyone's talking, like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not excited about this naked man and his baby and dead whales. I don't, <laughs> what? Do you know what game I want to play? I want to play the game that stars Kojima, where you play as Kojima after he leaves Konami. That's the only game I want to play. I want, and I want like Beyonce's entire Lemonade soundtrack backing it. Like, all right, this is, you've thought about this. And I thought about Kojima is in his "I left my ex and I'm doing good" phase. Like, even if you're not excited for the game, I don't even care about the game. It's not PT, so I don't care about it. But, but he is definitely on his victory road. Like. I'm working with Guillermo del Toro still. I do love that they were like, we can't do this thing. And he was like, excuse me. <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> like, like everything was like, hey. okay. Uh, so, as I was saying, <laughs> that was hilarious. Yes. Um, I am also excited for Don't Start Together coming to PS4. <laughs> it's not new, but it's coming to PS4, which means I'll actually play it. Okay. Uh, so, you guys know how I am with Don't Start. I'll wait for the airplane to pass. On your way, people. On your way. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> speaking of like fun games and not super like hard, thoughtful games, Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Yay! I'm so excited. Crash is one of my favorite games as a kid. Like Crash Bandicoot, uh, Banjo Kazooie was a big one. I had all the wacky, weird games. I like Crash Bandicoot Sorry, and Spyro. Yeah. And I, those were the first games that I like 100%ed. I remember. Because they were so fun that you wanted to play and find every single secret and everything. So uh, I'm pretty excited about a new Crash Bandicoot. Mm -hmm. I love that little guy. Um, I hope we hear some ooh uh, <laughs> coming out of our speakers. Can't wait to play that one. Um, and then there are two games that I'm tentatively excited about. Mm -hmm. And you know it must be a big deal for me to even be slightly excited. Because I'm usually a love or hate kind of gal. Mm -hmm. uh, Scalebound looks really cool. It's the game where it's like the guy who puts on a stupid ass headphones and then fights giant monsters with his little giant monster. Mm -hmm. um, very Japanese. <laughs> like, that's the best <laughs> way to describe it. Such a fucking Japanese concept. Um, but it looks intriguing. I just wish he'd, you know, give me an option to not be a man all the time. That's all I'd like, <laughs> Japan. I understand that this effeminate young boy is almost like a lady, but it's not the same thing. Hello, mm -hmm. Bailey. We're trying to have a conversation here. Um, so I'm tentatively excited about Scalebound. The giant battles look really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm tentatively excited for For Honor. Because For Honor, the concept and the story looks like it might be really intriguing. Mm -hmm. But the actual... So I hear that noise once a night. What? At least once a night. It sounds like a, like a gun going off or something. It turns all the car alarms off. I don't know what it is. And I was thinking, you know, this being like the 17th time I've heard it, maybe I should like ask someone that this noise is important. But, okay, sorry, it's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> For Honor's gameplay looks a lot like Bushido Blade or mm -hmm. Dynasty Warriors in that it's kind of slow and clunky looking. Mm -hmm. um, it's not quick and fast like a God of War kind of game. It's not like the games we're used to. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's just because the person playing the demo picked a certain type of character that moves very slowly. Um, because they were also fucking up a lot in that demo. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get my hands on it, so I don't actually know if it, if it plays better or smoother than that, but hopefully it does. I mean, I loved Bushido Blade at the time, mm -hmm. but try and go back and play Bushido Blade. It doesn't feel <laughs> good anymore. You're like, oh my god, like, let me hit that spark on. Uh, and that could, I can definitely say that to me as a spoiled gamer, like, if you go back and play the first Mario, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh shit, I can't move backwards and jump at the same time, like, fuck. You know, games have evolved, we've evolved, we're used to certain things, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm nervous, but lightly excited for for honor. Anytime any game doesn't have double jump, I get weirded out. Where's my <laughs> double jump? Where's the double jump? Are they hitting A twice? What the heck? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? Hitting A. What are you doing? This is how I hit A. That's how I hit A. If you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I think that's about it. Um. So, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. It's been nice to have you back. Yes. Uh, we are again a bi-weekly show, yes. so we won't be back next week, but our next show is on the July 6th. July 6th. I added extra T, so it's on July 6th. Of July 6th of <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Katrina will suddenly remember that she has like a dragon's birthday or something on the 6th. I don't think I do it. Is it, is it <laughs> next weekend? Maybe. Maybe. Weekend. 
Maybe. Okay. If, is Anime Expo during the fourth? Wait, the hold fourth on. is a Monday. Does yeah. You? you know what? It's no. We're fine. It's cool. I don't go to Anime Expo. It's on Wednesdays. So. All right. I don't mess with cool. those people. Excellent. <laughs> so we will see you on the sixth, eight yes. p.m. right here on Ooh. Twitch. Follow at Woman Up Show on Twitter for the announcement of our topic because we don't fucking know what it is yet. We uh, we are hoping to have some guests. So if you feel like tweeting people whose names might be uh, Kari Payton or uh, the Lamar yes, or shit, Xavier Woods, uh, you should tweet them <laughs> and tell them you would like to see them on our show. Yes. We also have a YouTube channel. Um, you could just go to YouTube and type in Woman Up Podcast and we pop right up because mm -hmm. fuck you, YouTube, not giving us the URL. Fuck you, right up the butt. Yep. Uh, you guys can follow me at O Katrina anywhere on the internet. Where can we get you, Sarah? Sarah the Rebel. Sarah with an H. As God intended. Correct. And you can follow us anywhere. Uh, if you look up for if you look up Woman Up Podcast on Twitter on Tumblr and then on Twitter, we're at Woman Up Show. Yay. Hooray. Uh we did all high five. We did all that stuff. Dang, you didn't want to high five me, fuck you, Katrina. I was gonna do a backwards forward. You just didn't keep going. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're gonna I'll stay on for a little bit longer after we say the outro to get any of your extra questions. Uh, we'll see you on the six. I mean, I need to stay around anyway because I'm gonna have to wait for a taxi. So okay, we're still gonna say the outro. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna do the outro. We'll see you on the six, and until then, party, party down, down and woman.